was probably a nicer experience than last year. And we obviously hit you well, on Wednesday about the issues, not you know, going all the way back to, to, to Nolan Richardson's days. Um, how good was it to have, you know, what I looked like a pretty complete performance in here? Yeah, I thought, you know, defensively we were really good. It's, it's you know, it's hard on student athletes when you, you're used to the rhythm of two games and then uh, finals. I mean, we, we did have some guys that, that um, you know, they, they were in the, they were in study hall quite a bit last week. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a game that across college basketball, you kind of got to keep an eye on just because of all the stuff that's going on and a long layoff. Uh, but I thought we responded really well. I thought we played really, really hard against a, a really good team. Um, I thought we respected Bradley, uh, had great week of preparation. And then Jordan Walsh just, uh, you know, keeps getting better. You can see his confidence continue to grow with each game and, Last two games, the energy that, that he's played with has been really, really, you know, on another level. Well, that was a rough presser in here last year. How, how how much better a feeling is this to have this kind of performance in a place where Arkansas, you know, for, frankly, has struggled for a long time? Yeah, I mean, last year, you know, I mean, quite frankly, we stunk. And, and um, that's why we've had different players get up and speak uh, the last two days about, you know, the four guys that were here all got an opportunity to speak to the team about what the experience was like. Um, you know, post game last year, Cade talked about how we, how that game against Hofstra here, we talked, you know, it was part of even, even on selection Sunday, it was being discussed. Um, so I think the four guys, they did a great job of, of, uh, giving, giving the new players a message that we wanted to perform much better here in front of an incredible fan base. Um, you know, cause Last night going to dinner at Benihana's, we, you know, I mean, the fans here really recognize our guys. Um, and and I think they wanted to, you know, play well and play hard and represent. We with about 17 left. They came back but didn't go back in. Can you give us an update on what, what happened with him? I mean, he got taped at halftime, and then the tape felt a little uncomfortable. And, and uh, you know, I just wasn't going to – you know, didn't feel the need to, to, to really put him back in when, when he got taped up at halftime and then, um, you know, left to, to get retaped. And then by that point, I just felt like, um, and I discussed it on the bench uh, quite a bit with coach smart because of his experience, uh, coach Arginal, uh, the three of us talked about it, um, you know, and with the flow and the way the game was going, just felt like, um, you know, there wasn't a need uh, to, to probably, put it back in at that juncture. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah. Eric, I asked Jordan this, um, I said, aside from confidence, you know, confidence is such a big part of a, a player's game, but aside from confidence, what's like the biggest difference you're seeing in Jordan lately? I just think he's, you know, he's playing, he's playing with great confidence. I think number one, I think number two, he's, 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 uh, he's making threes with his feet set. He's not taking a large volume of threes, but the quality of shot selection um, that Jordan has had has been really, really good. And then I think, you know, in Europe, he learned going to the basket, uh, you know, to finish through contact and, and, uh, and to go strong to the cup. I think he's really improved in that area too, of, of, of going with some authority to the rim. Homecoming of sorts for for Devo, and he was all over the place. Seven point seven boards, five steals. What do you think about his impact today? I thought he was unbelievable. Just his effort, his energy. Um, you know how he uh, attacked both passes, and you know five steals is it's a lot of steals for one player. Um, so I thought you know, and obviously his his defensive rebounding. He led us in defensive rebound. He, you know, he led us in steals. Um, knocked down a three. Uh, second on the team in assists. So I, I thought he, you know, his contribution uh, was really at a high level. Most back-to-back -back games where your team is dominating the hustle plays, blocks, steals, you know, turning turnovers into points. What, what has been the key to that? Because it's really kind of been where you, maybe the thing that stands out the most in these last two games. Yeah, I think that um, – you know, we did a we've done a great job of of covering for each other. If somebody gets beat off the dribble, we did not want, uh, you know, to give up threes tonight. Um, we held them to four. The goal was five or less, 
Um, so a really, really great job of, of uh, respecting their ability to shoot threes. They, they execute really well. Um, they, you know, they set flares for number 10. I thought we did a great job of going over the top of those. Um, I thought we were really physical. Um, you know, I thought our physicality, our length, all those things, and then being aggressive um, defensively is, you know, is, is, is our DNA and 16, you know, steel, it's a lot of steals. And, and uh, I think last year's team caused maybe uh, 20 turnovers, maybe three times. We've already had four and then and, and still have, a, you know, two more non-conference games, one before SEC play. So I think that the, the aggressiveness defensively is, is uh, you know, maybe a little bit ahead of where we thought we would be at this time of the year. Jordan talked about hearing the roar of the crowd when he fouled out. Just what do you make of the fans down here that don't get to see you guys very often now that you've seen this arena kind of at its best? Yeah, I mean, I you know, we actually showed our team earlier today um, Adriel Bailey's block, um, when we played Valpo, you know, the first year that, that I was here and, and, um, you could feel the passion on that block, even through a video. Um, our guys looked, they were really excited to play here, um, tonight. I thought, I thought that the, uh, uh, the anticipation, uh, the excitement level tonight was, was, was different than last year. Um, you know, I think, th I think that the guys were really excited to play this game. They were talking about it. Um, you know, and I, I, I think their effort tonight was really, was really good. And, and, and the fans deserved it. I mean, that's a, that's an incredible showing, um, you know, by the fans here. Coach, uh, according to Andrew Hutchinson of best of Arkansas sports, apparently there were uh, three flagrant fouls and two technicals in the half. And I was just asking, like, have you ever seen that in any part of a game that you've ever been a part of? And what do you think was the reasoning behind a lot of maybe those aggressive plays? I thought it was a great ref game. Um, I really did. I thought the refs did a, did a phenomenal job. Um, I think two teams were uh, excited to play the game. I think, you know, we are a physical team. Um, you know, Jordan knows, um, and coach smart addressed the team, you know, um, he took the floor to, to address some of that stuff after the game. And, um, you know, we don't want the head tap. I mean, that's something cause we just, we, you know, we made a great play and then we gave it right back with two free throws and, um, you know, Makai's technical. We, I mean, we, we can't have that, uh, in that juncture of the game. And so, We'll, we'll be able to watch that video of some of those things and and uh, try to correct it. There's there's an emphasis this year on on things like tapping the head and and so on and so forth. And um, you know that's that's an area that we have to uh, get more mature in. Um, but it was not. I thought the referees, like I said, I thought the whole crew was phenomenal tonight. Eric, in past years at this point in the season, I I could have just drawn names out of a hat and had as good of a chance of getting your lineup as anybody else and this year it's been very you know solid pretty consistent all the way through what's the difference between those first three years and this year and that stability yeah I mean I think that um you know with consistency you know roles can can um you know can play out and I mean if you look at um if you look at our record and then you know we lost to a by three points, you know, on a, on a, in the middle of a three games in three nights. Um, a lot of national publications have called that the best college game of the year. Our, our loss against Creighton, um, we scored at a high level. We didn't defend uh, like I thought we could. And, and so when you play with great consistency, your lineup's going to stay consistent. And again, we lost that game and Creighton's been without their big center. And when he plays, they're up, they're a, they're a different team. So we lost to a really good team that was highly ranked at the time. And we didn't feel a need to panic and change things up. And, um, but, but we have no idea how the season plays out. Obviously, you know, Trevin Brazil, you know, not going to play this year. He was an integral part of what we did that, that first collection of games. And, um, you know, last year, cause we were watching the Alabama, uh, Gonzaga game and, and, you know, last year at this time, I had no idea that Trey Wade was going to end up guarding um, Drew Timmy. Um, and we were going to ask him to front him and, and do it for 30 plus minutes. And that's what ended up happening. So roles are, you know, we, we, we want to keep an open mind and practice guys that are uh, working. We want to try to guys that are getting shots up on their own. You know, you want to reward stuff like that as much as possible. So how it unfolds, 
I have no idea, but through this sample size, the group that's been playing a lot is, has done a good job. Let's go back to the, the flagrant foul on Jordan where he fouled out. Could you tell what, what happened there? We couldn't tell it was on the other end of the court. I'm not sure. I okay. didn't get a true ex, you know, ex I didn't no really ask. I just wanted to know what the deal was and okay, well they get to shoot and get the ball back. Thanks. Gotcha. And then with Jordan, was there ever a moment where you could tell the light switched on for him, like at practice or in a game or something? Not really. I mean, I think that um, he's been consistent, you know, in his in his uh, work. He's watched a lot of film. Um, I, just, I just think that, you know, certain times, you know, kind of, hey, this is what I got to do to stay on the floor. This is how my role can expand. And, you know, he played – I thought he played really good in Hawaii. Um, and then the last two games he's, he's played phenomenal. Um, and this, you know, how he played tonight, we, we want him to continue cause we're a better, you know, a better team when he plays this, like as good as he has the last two games. Uh, coach with a young team, a lot of times the biggest growth is with the guys with, without the ball in their hands on the offensive end. Can you kind of touch on kind of how where these guys have grown in that area yeah i think we still have a lot of growth when the, when when the plays break down of, of what we call our open offense of uh we want to cut a little bit more we have some princeton uh principles that um you know that we're not doing quite at the level that we want um you know our pairs action on the weak side's got to get better we've got to slip a little bit better when we set pairs actions on the strong side uh, our split game is not meaning I pass to you and go screen for Mike Kaywood. That action's got to get a lot better because one guy's supposed to cut to the rim and the other pops back. And and sometimes we pass and stand too much. So, but we you know we have practice time that we that we'll continue to prove on that and um, not where we want to be, but but getting better. I had a two two part if that's okay. Well, one one on each side of the ball, you know. Uh, uh, Bradley was only averaging like 13.3 turnovers. You you turned them over 27 times, 37 nine advantage points off turnovers. What well, what was the reason you guys doubled their turnovers based on you know what they've done all year? Yeah, I mean I I hope that um, you know defensive tenacity, active hands. <clears throat> We've talked a lot about it, trying to attack the dribble when the ball hits the floor and is coming back up to the palm of the ball handler to try to be really aggressive um with your with your digs uh on the dribble and then you know I think the next part of that is how do you get deflections when your man passes um, I think we've always been a pretty good team uh jumping in passing lanes but I think we've added uh attacking the dribble a little bit better and trying to attack the pass with deflection and then we I mean when you're long and athletic that that certainly helps even without Nick, for most of the second half, you had very balanced scoring. Three guys, I think, between eighteen and fifteen, Devo scored pretty well. Um, what do you, what have you thought? What do you think about your balance scoring today, and then really what you've been able to do all season, even without Trev and without Nick? You know. Yeah, I mean, I think the guys are 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 feeling comfortable uh, with some offensive roles, and and I think we do have a lot of guys that can score in a variety of ways, and and certainly uh, when you have a player go seven to seven and runs the floor. Uh, like Jordan did and attacks the rim like he did. Um, it opens things up, you know, for other guys. And tonight was his night. Uh, you know, Ricky continues to be a guy that, that does a great job of drawing free throws attempted, as does Anthony Black. Thanks, guys.